This Let's Play was supported by these awesome hobby companies. Hello everybody and welcome. I am joined today by Marius from Phalanx and uh, we have a game to talk about on Tabletop Simulator. Marius, what have you got for us today? Uh, today we have uh, our implementation for the game Wei Cheng uh, uh, Mini World War II. Uh, now it's called Domination and it's area control game card driven uh, team play. Uh, so thematic is in the Second World War mm, and uh, to win the game you, you have to dominate the world just mm -hmm. as title says. World domination? This sounds like my kind of game. <laughs> 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 now uh, this game uh, I believe this is not the first edition or the first iteration of this game yeah? Yeah, it, it's uh, about two years ago, uh, Wei Cheng uh, from uh, Taiwan, uh, he created a game called World War II, Mini, sorry, Mini World War II. Uh, we like it very much. It was two years ago, yeah, year and a half in Essen. Uh, we find this game uh, really enjoying, so, uh, so we sign a contract with him to, to deliver a new version because in the previous one was a minor issue you may say it w it wasn't balanced uh, so we take uh, we think to we have to rebalance it we change uh, the, the board uh, the areas on the board uh, we change slightly cards uh, the, the events of points and all the stuff on the cards uh, and uh, yeah, we created this little board here. Uh, we call it tech board or player board. So lot, lot of, uh, lot of work. Uh, it was a lot of work. Now, so basically, we are fighting out World War Two in a nice self-contained board game. Uh, I assume we're going to see all the major players. So the Axis and the Allies are going to be rolling out. Exactly. Uh, so you have four. Four countries, four powers. Mm -hmm. uh, the main, okay, let's call them main powers. Uh, so it's team, uh, team play. So one team you have Axis. So one player will be the German player. The second one will be the Japan player, uh, and uh, opposite it's uh, UK player and the uh, USSR, so Russian player. Mm -hmm. So this, those those are the main uh, main factions uh, during the game. Uh, you can join to the uh, to the allies, uh, United States and China, uh, and you have yeah. Basically, it's uh, like that. Now uh, I'm seeing in the the middle of the board here. You've you've got some 3D models. I'm guessing these aren't part of the game. They're just something you find as an asset to use in Tabletop Simulator. Because I'm seeing the soldiers actually move. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. I just find them in the in the other game, and yeah. uh, I thought that they look really cool so why don't you use them yeah uh, well I, i'll assume your miniatures don't actually reload their weapons on tabletop uh, unfortunately <laughs> not <laughs> we're not at that stage of wargaming just yet yeah uh, we then got is that a, a v2 rocket in the middle yeah of it's yet? a v2 rocket yeah yeah i thought you know i i thought that cool will be cool to have uh, some some kind of for the round marker uh, some kind of miniature and i found this v2 it, it looks really cool, so I just use it. Uh, mm. But normally you will have a uh, cardboard token. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, this, this was something we were talking about a little bit earlier before we started filming, is that whenever this board game eventually comes to retail, you guys are going to have two versions of it, yeah? Yeah, exactly. You will have cardboard version, and uh, you will have a, a plastic expansion miniatures version, because uh, uh, lots of people, especially war gamers. Um, don't like uh, plastic and they prefer cardboards so uh, just like we did it in uh, the uh, Hannibal and Hamilcar uh, so you have uh, cardboard elements and you have plastic elements just choose what do you what do you want what do you prefer mm -hmm. and then I'm, I'm just having a, a quick scout here uh, having a look at some of the different factions so I'm seeing the forces look quite asymmetric so the Germans I'm seeing some Tigers some aircraft and some ships here yeah. And then whenever we come to the other factions, it looks as if 
there's a different balance of what you're able to deploy on the table. So is yes, that is. a key part of the game? Yes, it is. Yes, yes. Uh, it's a symmetrical game. So, uh, for example, as you see, a Russian player have only one uh, navy, mm. only one fleet. Uh, the Japanese player has uh, multiple fleets. Yeah, so mm -hmm. this is definitely a, a symmetrical uh, supply. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's, it's very, very cool. It's cool to see the, the different miniatures and model choices you've made here because they, they do look really nice and it's really easy to identify what they are. Uh, now, if we were to dive into a game, I'm guessing one of the, the key heart parts of the game is the, the player board that I'm having a look at here over by the, the British forces. Yeah. So how do, we, how do we read this, this tactical board here? Okay, uh, this is a technolo technological board. Mm -hmm. uh, and because in the game, uh, one uh, part of the game, you could uh, develop a technology during the game. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to do this. Uh, if you wish, you can do it. It, all, it will consume your action. So you have to choose if you wish or, uh, or not to do it. Uh, and if you develop a technology, you just take it from the, from the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, to the upper row, for example, if you will develop this, uh, this, this car technology, its movement, you will take uh, this item and put it uh, in, the, in the upper row so to indicate that movement on the board when you use armies is uh, cheaper for you. Mm -hmm. and so, but basically, it's, it's technological research and improvements that we're going through on this. That's, that's exactly. Cool. Exactly. Cool. So you can uh, choose your path uh, during the during the war. Mm -hmm. If you if you wish to upgrade your units uh, or other stuff, or you just don't want to use it, uh, but it's wise to to upgrade some of the technology during the uh, during the play. And then whenever we're playing on the, the actual board here, so I assume, do we have pre-deployed forces or are we having to deploy forces as we go and go into like the different theaters that we're seeing here? Okay, so uh, yeah, the, if you are first in the game, you have to pre-deployed units. So here uh, you have these little icons on the board, those mm -hmm. little two tanks. Here you have uh, this pink one. Mm -hmm. uh, so you just deploy the units, it's fixed. Uh, and you start playing uh, as it is. Mm -hmm. However, if you are an experienced gamer, uh, on the end of the rules, uh, you have to um, you have a list of the units uh, that are that you can use it to deploy, and you can deploy it wherever you want. Okay, uh, very cool. Yeah, so so you can do it as you as you prefer. And then each of the zones on the boards, I'm guessing that's a different location in. Are we doing the, the European war? Or are we doing Pacific war? Or are we doing both? We're doing everything. Uh, so we are in the Atlantic, in the Pacific, in the Asia. So, so it's, it's all the world uh, you have on this map. So f when you start looking uh, the Germany and go to the to the east, uh, so you'll see that here you have Poland, you have Baltics, you have uh, Moscow mm -hmm. uh, on the top row, far to the east, uh, up to the Japan, Manjuria. Uh, on the bottom, you have uh, India, uh, all the uh, Malaya and up uh, and China. So still going east uh, through the Pacific Ocean uh, to the States and go back to the to the Germany through the uh, through the Europe through the awesome. Atlantic Ocean. Awesome. So yeah, so so the board is all it's yeah, world. So it, yeah, so it's it's laid out properly so that as you're going around the board, you're going around the world. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Of course, we have some okay minor issues for some people for example here uh, you have uh, here you have Egypt and here you have uh, Libya so they should be opposite opposite uh, but for the sake of the mechanic uh, of the game we just uh, have to keep it like that uh, mm -hmm. to especially to keep the thematic that uh, at the beginning of the World War II, Second World War, uh, the Egypt was uh, strongly connected to the UK and uh, at the late 
years of the war uh, invasion to the Italy starts in uh, in Libya. So, mm. yeah, it was original idea of the Wei Cheng. So we live it like that because we thought it's really cool. It's not geographical uh, precise, but it's cooler to have this thematic uh, sense of the mm. game. Yeah, well, it, it's it's the level of abstraction that you have to take to actually lay the board out correctly. Exactly. So that the tactics are going to play out correctly. So it it makes perfect sense to me. Exactly. Exactly. Now, I do wonder if I could get the Japanese to actually invade Australia and win, because they almost uh, managed it during the war. Yeah, this is uh, this is quite difficult, especially if you have experienced player. Uh, mm. I managed this, but uh, when I played uh, with the first player, with the weak player, uh, mm. so yeah, I go with the Japan, go through the Australia, Canada, Canada, and I even mm. finished in the in, in London. <laughs> <laughs> nice. so, really, really fun. Really fun. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I'm liking the idea. I'm liking the level of abstraction you have here. All right, I tell you what. Uh, I think we've we've seen pretty much everything on the board except for I think in the middle of the board here. What are these three card decks that we're seeing? Okay, so here, first of all, here you have this, uh, round uh, meter, mm -hmm. uh, as you see, 19, 39, 40, 41, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, here, this is deck of cards that you will be drawn each year at the beginning of the each year. Mm -hmm. uh, this is for the discard pile. So if you just use everything, you can go back. Mm -hmm. uh, but more important are those. Uh, those are China uh, and US join war. So you have actions for Russian and UK player that they can uh, they can take the states or China into the war. Uh, they have to play a card. Uh, after that, this little guy go one, one space on this board. Uh, mm -hmm. The player draw a card. Uh, and uh, yeah, and when, uh, when this guy just go to the, to the US flag, it means that uh, those uh, areas start to become the homeland for the UK because we have this word homeland. Uh, before the US joined the war, the UK player cannot use the green, the US units, and cannot go through the areas of the United States. And this is the same mm. for the Russian and China area. I see. So whenever we're looking out at the, the UK forces here, I'm seeing some of the tanks are marked in a lighter green. Exactly. Those are tanks. US tanks. They mm -hmm. are, uh, yeah, they will be available for you if uh, the states join the war. I see. I see. All right. Well, I tell you what, let's, I assume the game is set up as if we were going to play from turn one. So how about we actually play through the first round of the game to actually see how this is going to work? Yeah, no problem. Uh, so, only question is, uh, do you wish to play two-player or four-player game? Uh, you know, let's do it four-player. Okay. Uh, and let's play... Uh, I have to... This is cool. One cool feature here. If you... Here in the 13, uh, 39, mm -hmm. uh, you have these little numbers here. Four and uh, five is marked by the German flag. Mm -hmm. It means how many cards you will draw at the beginning of, the, of this year. Mm -hmm. So everyone in the 13, uh, 39 uh, draw four cards and German player draw five cards. Ah. Uh, after that, so let's, I'll put those cards here. So you know that the German player in the first year of the war will have the last move. So everybody's getting their okay. draw. And yeah, now we skip it, but normally you have, uh, you have draft round. Draft round. Mm -hmm. So you just keep one card and pass uh, the rest of the cards to the player on the left. And you will do it until you have uh, the last card on your hand and the last card will go to the discard pile. Because mm -hmm. uh, this was uh, the second issue of the of the first the first game, uh, it's card game. So it's not balanced because you draw the cards. Some mm -hmm. some 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 person may draw all the six, and the other one will draw all, only the three. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's it's uh, it's not nice. So we adapt the draft. 
uh, and the draft work perfectly. It balances most of the of this issue that uh, with those cards. So yeah, it gives everybody pretty much the same chance of having access to everything. Exactly, and especially with the uh, with the technology technology. Uh, so yeah, so. First of all, you just start the game, you choose one of the cards, you use the left top corner uh, number. So this is operation points. Uh, and you use the operation points basically for the movement, for the destroying units and for deploying units. So mm -hmm. in the techno technology board you have, in the tech board you have uh, movement, uh, attack and deployment of your ground troops, land troops as we call it. And here you have Navy. Mm -hmm. uh, in the middle, the yellow one, they help you uh, to with the deployment to, to build it cheaper, deployment mm -hmm. will be cheaper. Uh, and on the right side of the tech board, you have uh, violet and this red orange uh, cubes. Uh, they are rocketry technolo technology and uh, uh, and the spy and enigma technology. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can there are a lot of things here going on, uh, but just stay uh, stay with the basics. So, for example, I have, let's say, I have this card with the six, right? Mm -hmm. I play it. Uh, I say to everyone, okay, I have six. Uh, I have six operation points to do something. So I can destroy this neutral in tank in Poland, so how it was in 39. So uh, it cost me three points, right? Because destroying the tanks... Uh, the land units cost me three free operation points. Okay, uh, I understand. Yeah, so now I can use other two. Uh, I have three op operation points more, so I can take any of my of my tanks to move it in the in, in Poland. Why not? Because there are two victory points. The Poland is for, worth two victory points. Okay, so, so just just a quick question for movement. Yeah. So I'm seeing you've moved from way back here. Exactly. And to Poland. So exactly. is, uh, is there any limit to how many spaces you can move? Okay, and this is, this is really, uh, this for the first time when you play it, for the, for the first players, it's quite confusing hmm. uh, because you have this, uh, it's called in supply unit or out of supply. So basically it's, you can move any of your unit that is in supply. So it means that it's uh, adjacent to your homeland or in your homeland mm -hmm. uh, or any unit uh, and if any unit is in the in the board it means in have connection uh, due to the other of your units uh, uh, so it's, it's kind of like supply lines okay exactly exactly and uh, I show you one funny things because funny really really nice thing that uh, some people have different to understand the idea of movement and uh, and supply because we have the, there was a game that uh, my friend just play like okay so I move here and next I move here and I said to him no you don't have to do that if you have you've had if you have an army in Poland mm -hmm. uh, you can take this army and just move it here because here you have line of supply yeah so, so it's, it's not that you're moving to a location it's that you yeah have of that location, therefore you have exactly. supply lines running all the way through. Exactly, and I that, show you that's this. That's a really clever mechanic. I show you really think that this is very difficult for people to uh, comprehend. Uh, for example, now let's go to the to the UK. Mm -hmm. I have, let's say, I have unit here, okay, mm -hmm. and I have you another unit here. Oh, by the way, this are uh, this uh, colorish uh, arrows on the board. Mm -hmm. It off map connections. So uh -huh. it means that this uh, area and this area are adjacent. Uh -huh. uh, so now it's the funny, funny thing. Uh, if I have this situation, I can take this uh, ship from the, from the UK mm -hmm. and move it here off the board here, here, and leave it here. Because mm -hmm. All those areas are in my sub, in supply. So, yeah. okay, and people ask me, okay, but how it's possible? Here you have land, here you have land. 
how you can move your ships through the land? And I said to them, okay, but the 70% uh, of the surface of the earth is uh, water, right? Mm -hmm. So just imagine you start in the uh, Straits of Dover, uh, mm -hmm. go through the uh, Suez, Suez Canal, Canal mm -hmm. and go to the India. Yeah, okay? as soon as you're through and the Suez, you've got open sea to get there. Exactly. So, and then they realize, okay, this is, this is, uh, this is really cool. And it gives you really nice, uh, really nice movements. Mm -hmm. uh, we have one game that uh, Japan player uh, go through this, uh, this corridor to the, to the UK. Uh, <laughs> via India, mm -hmm. Iran, uh, and all the way. I mean, like, I, I do remember watching a, a documentary where a Russian fleet, I believe it was, they were up in like the, the northern sea above Russia, and they right. somehow had to figure out how to get around to the opposite side of Russia, and they actually tried to go the long way around. This was not a good plan. <laughs> yeah, they tried to go down around the, the outside of Africa, and it was just like, what? what? Yeah, they probably they should try the, the northern passage. Uh, Maybe. <laughs> uh, okay, let's uh, let's back to the because um, yeah. one one more mechanic. Uh, uh, so I've mo I've moved my my army. Yeah, so you've got one, one point left. One point left. So if I have one or more point left, I can rotate my card that I just played mm -hmm. uh, ninety degrees, and it means that it's one operation points left for the for the for the rest of the round. I can use it. Uh, in any f uh, further turns uh, to boost my another card. So, for example, in in the not, in the next turn, if I will play the sixth one, I can use it this one and have seven. And if I will be a Russian player, I can use the bottom mm -hmm. uh, of the card to have seven. And with this, I can even have eight operation points um, mm -hmm. during uh, my turn. Now, the, the anatomy of the cards. So the top corner is just what you get. What exactly. are the other two symbols on here? Exactly. In the right, uh, top right corner, you have technology. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, be get, uh, we'll get to in a moment. And in the bottom, you have event. And the event can be played by the power uh, that the color of the event is. So the red cards are for the Russian player. The white cards are for the Japanese player. The, the tan or yellow as you uh, as you wish to call it uh, it's for the UK player uh, we have uh, okay this one for the German player mm -hmm. and in the middle on the table as you asked before here you have cards for the uh, US and China mm -hmm. uh, and uh, US cards can be used by the UK player event US mm -hmm. event and uh, China event can be used by the Russian player. However, uh, those powers must be in war to, that they can use the, the event. Yeah, so, so currently we're in 1939. America's looking at it going, we don't want another war. China's off doing its own thing exactly. as well. Exactly, yeah. So you can, uh, you can use those cards, but you can, can't use the, the event of the mm -hmm. US cards. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's just quick to explain you the working of the technology mm -hmm. so for example if i in my turn i can in my in my turn i have to play one card mm -hmm. uh, so let's say i don't want to do any operation i want to play a uh, technology so mm -hmm. i take one card from my hand i don't show to anybody just uh, and place it uh, we place it on the on the right of the tech board you can place it wherever you want but remember not to mix with anything when with anyone else anything else uh, at the end of the round uh, there is strategic round uh, you all the players if they played any technology and you can play only one technology during uh, during a year, a year during round so when you flip your technology uh, mm -hmm. you look at the icon and take one cube uh, from this icon, put it in the upper row, and from now on, uh, destroying the tanks will mm -hmm. cost me, as a German player, one operation points less. And mm -hmm. this is and this is quite cool, because uh, here you have uh, here it's your movement, yeah, mm -hmm. of your land movement or land unit movement. Here you have your deployment, but here is for how much operation points you have to spend 
to destroy a tank. Mm -hmm. It's not your tank that are more efficient, but you are more efficient in destroying the opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, now, so, an important question then. So whenever you're playing this card as a technology card, is that instead of playing it for its operational exactly. value? Exactly. Okay, so it's one or the other. Exactly. So, and the same if you play event card, event on the card, you can't play the, the operation points. See, so you just get one of the three that's on your card. Got it. Exactly. Yeah. So you have to decide what, uh, what mm -hmm. you want to do uh, with those cards. Mm -hmm. All right. So you've taken your turn. You've used all your points and you have saved one point. Yeah? Exactly. Okay. So then do we move clockwise around the table? Exactly. Okay, so now it would be the British player's turn. Yes. All right, so let me see if I have learned how to play this then. So oh, from, yeah. <laughs> so from be my guest. <laughs> from these three cards then, I would decide to play a five. Sorry, I, one one thing, because I just stole your... Uh, oh, yeah, because we were, we were moving some stuff around. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, now it's okay. Okay. So from there, uh, I have some ships which are deployed. Hmm. What would be the best thing to do here? Because currently, I'm fighting over here, I'm fighting over here. I assume I don't need to attack the Russians because they're friends. Yeah, you can't attack Russians. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can't move through the, their territory. Uh, so I think what I'll do is I will spend three of those five points to move one of my ships down into Egypt to start. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I didn't explain you this, uh, mm -hmm. the shape of the areas uh, matter. Mm -hmm. So uh, on the square, you can mm -hmm. have only land units, stack ah. only land units. On the circle, so you can stack only ships. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the octagonal, you can stack whatever you want, and okay. you have stacking limit. So uh, everywhere uh, on each area, there mm -hmm. can be only two units. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the capital, capital means three star area. Uh, you have four uh, of the units. And if you look closely, uh, for example, in UK, here you have those two icons. Uh, this uh, crane and uh, factory. Mm -hmm. It means that in this area you can deploy uh, ship and uh, navy and land units. Uh, so you cannot deploy it wherever you want. You have to look where you can deploy units. Uh, in that case, I will begin by deploying uh, a tank to here. Exactly. So it costs you three, and you have two more, uh, two mm -hmm. more points. Uh, that should not be there yet. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so after doing that, I would have two left, and it cost no. me two. Uh, no. Well, I no. paid three to deploy. Yeah, exactly. I five, but so I have two left, yeah? Uh, for now, yeah. Mm. So you can... So I would use those two to then move my tank up into here. You can do this. Okay, and then that will be done, and that's discarded, yeah? Uh, no, you can't do this. Uh, no? Because, no, because as you see, here... It's uh, Atlantic Ocean, and you don't have the unit here, so it's not yes. in supply. Ah, uh, yes. I, no, I didn't notice there was no thing between here yeah. and here. Yeah. And I, I could just deploy into exactly the UK and then do that, yeah, which precisely. would be the way to do it. Okay, exactly. cool. Yeah. So now uh, you just uh, conquer this, ar this area. So mm -hmm. you indicate this by moving your uh, victory points token one point. Uh, forward because this is one uh, one victory points. Each star is one victory points. Okay, and so as you lose control, do you lose victory points? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so it's kind it's... of like a nice little tug of war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so for the uh, Japanese. Japanese. Oh, so yeah. Okay. So for the because there is uh, this action. Uh, as for the UK player, mm -hmm. uh, oh, sorry, you should discard it here. Mm -hmm. If you are uh, uh, if you are UK player during your tar turn, you can spend your action to uh, we call it land lease action, mm -hmm. uh, as it was in history. Uh, so you just take one card from your hand, 
discarded. Mm -hmm. Take one card, random of course, card from the from the American US deck. Yeah. deck. Mm -hmm. yeah. Move this guy one uh, one space further, mm -hmm. uh, and this card it will be it's your card for the next round. So in the next round, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to your normal normal four cards that you will draw, uh, you will get one more this uh, one more card. I see, uh, and I assume that's instead of playing the card from my hand, yeah. Exactly. This is uh, this is additional. This is uh, okay. this is additional action yeah, instead of the normal playing. Uh, okay. okay. And how long does a round last? Do, do we keep going around until people can't play cards, or? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. until every, you might say when everyone pass, because mm. you can pass uh, in any any time during your uh, uh, during the round, mm -hmm. uh, but you have to discard any cards you have on your hand. Uh, mm -hmm. You can keep it one uh, of those cards. Uh, okay. For the for the next round, uh, usual it's uh, yeah we just play until the end of cards on your hand, uh -huh. uh, and sometimes it's very wise to to keep one card for the next round that because you are one uh, additional card in the next round, mm -hmm. so really 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 nice. Uh, really yeah, nice. It, it feels really straightforward once you understand those those base mechanics. I mean, right now I feel like I just sit down with a bunch of gamers and teach them to play this. Yeah, it's really it's really cool. Uh, especially there is more small details, and those small details uh, make the game really fun. Because uh, here you have the the basic rules, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but for example, you have uh, you have diplomation, and you can play a card for a diplomation uh, here, as you have. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, this is event, so you have this card as your. Uh, so Japanese, if the Japanese player will have will have this card, he can play it. Uh, she can play it as the as diplomation and uh, instantly get one victory points. Uh, mm -hmm. As it's indicated here, uh, mm -hmm. it might it might be counter uh, because uh, there are more diplomation cards with the Turkey. There are four. I don't know how to call it the, the countries, neutral countries. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so you can try to to play with the with the diplomation, not to conquer, but to uh, get uh, the points through yeah. the through the diplomation. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, having good relations with those four countries will will gain you victory points. Exactly. Got it. Uh, it probably it will not give you the the. the the victory, but uh, if, you're, you, if you're running short of options on what you want to do, yeah, you know, it never hurts to talk to folks. <laughs> uh, so I believe. Oh yeah, and yeah, I believe it's it's uh, everything you have to know. The mm -hmm. the rest in the is in the rule book because mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, the rocketry technology. Uh, if you play them, you will be discarding uh, cards from the hand of your opponent, so it's quite mm -hmm. powerful. Of course, it starts with the V1, next V2, and the uh, A-bomb uh, at the end. Uh, you have the Violet technology, uh, this is Spy and Enigma, they will help you to manage your hand, uh, cards on your hand. Uh, so, so here you have lots of, lots of the decision to, to make to win the game. It's it's very very deep. I, I I quite like this, and one thing I do want to point out to everybody at home is this is going to be a physical game that you will be able to pick up and play with your mates after the apocalypse. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, how are you guys actually bringing this particular one to market? Uh, okay, we start. Uh... You may say as usual for us, so we go to the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. uh, we start the campaign uh, at 22nd uh, of June, so very nice date, you may say. Mm -hmm. uh, and it will last, I'm not sure right now, about a month. Maybe not a month. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't want to lie here. Uh, but we start the campaign twenty uh, second of uh, June. So to do yeah. It. And uh, are you guys? Uh, all right. It's you guys. It's Phalanx. I know you've got expansions planned for this. Yes. Yes. We have this. Uh, it was in the 
it was in the in the main game uh, uh, in the, the previous version the, yeah the previous version yeah exactly mm. in the mini uh, so it will expand the board uh, those are of course our stretch goals uh, we believe we can get them very soon mm -hmm. uh, in the middle of the board there will be uh, Arctic Arctic yeah uh, uh -huh. so few more areas and they will give you a more option to to tactical to get tactical advantage mm -hmm. uh, and there is uh, one additional mechanic uh, that, that helps uh, people teams who controls the the Arctic yeah. I have to say, I'm seeing a lot of potential with this game because, I mean, like, doing World War II right now, fantastic. It's something everybody knows, everybody loves. But, I mean, th this could be taken to Cold War, to modern-day warfare, to anywhere. It's great. Yeah, yeah. And we are very happy with what we accomplish. We mm -hmm. add some some few stuff, some uh, things to, to the original game, for example. Uh, there was no bombers, uh, this air fleet, how we call it, and the U-boats. The U-boats are the special unit for the uh, for the Germany, and we hope that they will uh, they are they, they they will be the stretch goals. Uh, but they are really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, we we worked a lot with this game, so we are quite happy. Where it, are we now? It, it shows. This looks like it is going to be barrels of fun for everybody at home and that to me is the absolute most important thing i love yeah. it uh, th this is one i would sit down with my family because i mean like sometimes whenever as gamers we we sit down and try and show our families or non-gamers a game like this or a just a game that we really love sometimes the the concepts are a little too abstract a little too deep for them this is something that's very recognizable for just regular family members oh it's world war ii okay great how do I move? It's, How do I attack? It's super simple. Those mechanics are very clean. Yeah. And the, the actual thematicness of it is something they can engage with very easily without going, I'm lost and I'm confused. Especially that we have a, a, a variant for the for the beginners. Uh, mm -hmm. It's in the rule book uh, that you start the game in the in the beginning of the war in the thirty nine, and you play only four turns, so only up to forty two, mm -hmm. uh, and you use only operation points. You don't use the technology, and you don't use the event. Uh, mm -hmm. You just use the the basic mechanic. Uh, mechanics uh, in the game uh, so this is really easy for the for the beginners uh, it, it sounds absolutely fantastic thank you for for showing the game off to us and uh, i'm definitely going to be keeping an eye out on this one when it lands on kickstarter I, I guess it's time to pass it out to everybody out there in tv land drop your comments in below does this look and sound like a fun game to you it definitely does to me Make sure and keep an eye out for the Kickstarter whenever it lands. Uh, we will move on. We'll see you again soon. We hope you enjoyed this Let's Play. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.